Well, it's been another tough day for some farmers as they watch the bodies of animals which have died in the snow being removed from their farms. But on the first day of a Department of Agriculture scheme to offer free collection to those hardest hit, many farmers say they still can't even get access to some of their fields to locate their animals. You're warned that Judith Hill's report contains some distressing images. As the snow starts to give up the dead, the painful task of removing those animals from farms gets underway. This the first day of a Department of Agriculture scheme to offer free collection of dead stock to those farmers hardest hit. We've been lifting the stock around the farms for years, but it's, it's, it's heartbreaking when you go there and you see a, a, big, a big pile of lambs and you owe something there. Like, you know, it's, it's a farmer's livelihood, you know. And, you know, it's, an it's, it's, just, it's just not nice, like, but somebody has to do it and we'll just get on ahead and do it. And we'll just Terry White has been farming near Castle Welland for 25 years. He's had to watch 40 of his lambs being taken away in bags. Now many of his ewes are being disposed of too. It's very, very soul destroying. Everybody in the house is affected. It's tough. Your year's work, you see it going away on a lorry when it should be going to the meat plant or going to the air market. It's, it's soul destroying. While there are a few new signs of life on Terry's farm, it's little relief against the harsh financial reality caused by the big freeze. We're going to be out thousands, and I mean, we're having to buy extra feed. Feed's getting scarce, and uh, the meal costs are through the roof and uh, the meal merchant told me this morning that the meal is getting hard to get to. So, I mean, there's all sorts of problems there. These collections are scheduled to last for two weeks, but it's expected this window will be extended with hills still covered by blankets of snow. For contractors, their work here has really only begun. They're literally taking hundreds of calls a day from farmers because under these snowy fields, hundreds of animals still lie buried. Judith Hill, UTV Live. Hello once again, you're watching UTV Live tonight. Well, it's five days since the snowstorm struck and today the Royal Air Force began dropping food to farms across the glens of Antrim. As farmers and their animals continue their struggle to cope in the Arctic conditions, we've been to two rural communities. Mark Mallet has been to Dramara, but first, Jane Lockery reports from North Antrim. The word of the blades in this Chinook helicopter will be a welcome sound over the farms in the glens of Antrim as farmers struggle to feed their animals stranded in the deep snow. Flown by the RAF and drafted in by the Department of Agriculture, it's been loaded up with vital food for livestock. Kevin Robinson owns a sheep and cattle farm near Glen Arm, which is still covered with snow. He's been waiting for a food drop all day. Well, in the remote hills, it's very important for there's livestock dying and livestock buried. And as you can see all around you, it's a very, very bleak area. There was no electricity here for four days, which also proved a nightmare for these farmers trying to keep their animals alive in atrocious conditions. This farmer near Glen Arm has been digging through the night to try and clear the literally mounds of snow which are blocking his farmhouse. And behind that house are 140 dairy cows, all of which need fed. We need help really bad. As you can see up the lane here, there's uh, myself and uh, there's countless other farmers like me can't even gain access into their own yards to access feed, to take out to other animals that's out in fields and outlying areas. Driving even deeper into the glens, we travelled down the Deer Park Road, which had been reduced to one lane. Either side was well over 12 feet of snow. The true cost of these Arctic conditions won't be known until the thaw comes. And at the moment, the forecast is for more snow. Jane Lockery, UTV Live tonight in the glens of Antrim. Driving through County Down, and as you can see, there has been little in the way of improvement for farmers. Mile after mile, the walls of snow stand tall, some of them as high as 15 feet. And in the hills around Sleeve Croob, the situation remains dire. This is the Clonvarkin Road just outside of Dramara. As you can see, the road has been made pretty much passable, albeit with care. But then look, the blanket of snow stretches for miles the further south that you go. 
and with more snow arriving, well, the fear is that the situation can only get worse. Farmers still fearing the worst for their livestock, say not enough is being done to help them. Like we were looking track machines here to open the roads, and they were talking about sending a, 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 a drinner, a drink the road like, and told the snow was 10, 15 foot deep. What good are dinner going to be to us? Desi's mother, May, is also struggling in the on spring like conditions. Oh, don't mention it. This is far worse than the 63 we were in here for a full week that day. It's far deeper. It's harder, old hard snow, you can't even lift it. It's a pity the poor animals. Another victim of the heavy snow is this year's Easter Stages rally. It had been due to take place on Saturday and should have gone through the Dramara Hills, but that will not now happen. Instead, the focus will be on getting this community back on its feet. Mark Mallett, UTV Live tonight, Finnis. About their Thank desperate you battle in the hills, you're advised you may find some scenes disturbing. The majesty of the Mourns. It's supposed to be spring here, but instead it looks and feels like the cruelest of winters. Further in, despair amid the beauty. This is Trassy Road. Some snow has been cleared, but getting about painstakingly slow. At Desmond Patterson's farm, sheep keep warm within the ruins. Others lie where they took their last breath. We do not know the full scale. I think we're not know the full scale for a couple of weeks till the snow starts to melt and starts to disappear. And then we'll be able to find whatever sheep is buried under the snow. You cannot go out. Um, you go poking there for sheep at this time, point in time, but uh, it's a long time to find sheep. For Desmond, it's all become too much. So it's hard to do. Sorry. How about that? It's obviously just too yeah. much. It certainly is, yeah. A lot of despair, Desmond. Yeah, obviously. definitely is, yeah. Tell me about it, how difficult it's been. Well, certainly, there's isolation of working on your own all the time. No, I'm quite lucky, yeah, I have plenty of help, but a lot of the farmers haven't got help. Pat McDowell hasn't slept in days. He's too afraid to. Still just in shock. Shock and you just seem to be getting no place every day. I spent two, a day getting them pains right out to get some of the cattle back in again. They're just standing there in the pains. They can't get them moved, can't get nothing. Like Desmond, his sheds have also been devastated by the storms. He lost cattle here, but knows many more of his flock are dead in the hills. He just can't reach them yet. It's just desperate. Lifetime's work wiped out. Will you survive this? I suppose we'll have to. <whistles> Neighbour Christy Devlin moves his sheep from field to field to keep them warm. You see, every morning we're waking up, we hope for a bit of or a bit of green field. But unfortunately, that hasn't came yet. And it will soon need to come, for if it doesn't, we're in big diffs, big trouble. If it doesn't come soon, yeah. what do you fear? Well, I fear you're going to have more dead stock, more hardship, more expense, and more turmoil. Like the others, many of his animals are still unaccounted for. It's very stressful, and it's very dreadful when you come out and see your newborn lambs, rams you bought, hoping to see the best from them. It's a breeding process when they're frozen, stuck to the ground. It's not a very nice thing. It's six days now, and still no respite. It's hard, no? Very hard. Do you feel completely helpless? Yeah. See, you've no control over it, like. You know, it's a, a lifetime building up to the arm, and 
there's just nearly wait out. Oh, there's a hidden story. The people that come from America not think there's nothing like this place, but they're not here today. So I don't know what they'll think today if they're here, tramping through it from morning to night. You are wading through that there, looking at the livestock. It's a different gem. We don't see the beauty. In his spare time, Desmond Patterson is an Ulster Unionist councillor, and with government holding emergency talks tomorrow to see what more they can do to help ease the pain, he's angry at them all, including his own party's minister. The time is running out very, very quickly, and um, they need to make some real decisions tomorrow instead of um, putting these things off for week after week after week. And you're talking about your own yes, party? Yes, I'm, you know, I'm talking about my own minister, yes. And the agriculture yes, minister? Yes, those two ministers need to pull their socks off. Well, I think they need to compensate us money and get some money till it's shut quick. Because expenses is enormous, you know. And if that doesn't happen? Well, the future of farming in the hills is over. That's as simple as that. There'll be no farmers left. Farm life is never easy. Here in the hills, they may be worn out, weary, but they simply have to keep going. We just have to struggle on. Um, we don't seem to worry too much about everything else. Um, that's the way we have to do it. How hard is it, Christy, to stay positive? Well, it's, it's a life you're brought up with, and you do be, you do. It's a challenge in times, at the best of times. So you have to take the rough with the smooth and you just rally on at it and hope for the best. As we leave the Mourns, we leave a community struggling to survive in their shadow, a community scarred by Mother Nature. Sharon O'Neill, UTV Live Tonight. Uh, with me in the studio is Joe Byrne, the Deputy Chairman of the Agriculture Committee, and Barclay Bell, the Deputy President of the Ulster Farmers Union. Barclay Bell, what have you witnessed today? Well, uh, maybe not today, but uh, certainly over the past few days, um, some very harrowing uh, scenes. Certainly on Monday, we were up in the glens of Antrim, and uh, you know, to see sheep hardly fit to move, to, to, to see dead sheep being dug out of the snow, and I suppose as well as that, to see farmers and just the distress state that farmers are in, it, it is having a serious impact Joe on Byrne, them. Joe you're a, the Deputy Chairman of the Agriculture Committee, but uh, your constituency is a rural one. So wh what have you been seeing? Well, today I spent most of the afternoon in West Roan between Plumbridge and Riverstown, Paul, and I visited two farmers, the O'Neill family farm and the Cullinans, and both those families have lost a lot of sheep and lamb over the last five or six days. And you've been sufficiently moved that the Agriculture Committee has been recalled from holiday. What is that going to achieve? Well, first of all, I think the Assembly needs to be seen to be reflecting the concerns of the farmers affected. And that's the reason, as Deputy Chairman, I discussed this morning with the Chairman, Paul Frew, and we both agreed that we would convene an emergency meeting of the Committee in the morning, and that's happening at 10 a.m. It's crucial, Paul, that we as Assembly members and indeed the Executive address these issues at the moment because so, so many families and farmers are suffering badly and I think it's important that we do that. And you, you're, you will have something that you will be able to bring to the Agriculture Minister who can bring it to the, to the Executive meeting which is happening later tomorrow, is that the intention? Yes, well the intention is to make sure that we have a coordinated response to the emergency that's affecting so many farmers. I think it's also important that we in some way address the issue of some sort of cash aid relief for farmers. Mm -hmm. I spoke to a farmer today that has spent £300 in diesel over the last five days, basically on machinery that was removing snow from laneways and some of the smaller roads. And I think there has to be some sort of an aid package for those farmers. Barclay Bell, what, what do you think of the response from government? I think certainly since the start of the week we have seen a very good response. Um, I suppose our fear is now that if we, if we see more snow as the week goes on, the forecast isn't good that that response can be kept up and that a coordinated response can be maintained um, mm. cri critically important. Meanwhile, meanwhile farmers are helping themselves. I understand that farmers have been making help available from quite some distance to to their beleaguered neighbours up here. Yes, um, a, a helpline was set up by the Department of Agriculture to try and source uh, feed and, and fodder for these animals 
and um, you know we have had great response within Northern Ireland. Farmers have pulled out all the stops. I have to give credit to some commercial companies as well who have been very helpful. And just just today, I think there was an offer from County mm -hmm. Kildare as well. We have seen emotional men on television this week. What support is there for these people? Well, I think within the rural community, we do have a very good charity called Rural Support. And maybe a charity that maybe hasn't been used an awful lot by farmers before. Farmers are very proud people, but I think now that some of them are really are at their wit's end. And I would encourage farmers to consider tackling rural or contacting rural support. They, they have experts in there who can deal with these situations. And Joe Byrne, a point to be made here is that this is more than a job. This is a way of life. We are talking here about agriculture. So it's much more than just something that you can walk away from at the end of the day. Absolutely, Paul. It's really a 24-7 job, seven days a week. When I visited James McHenry last Monday, I could see a man that was very distressed and his family and his cousins were about the situation that they were in. Today, when I was at the O'Neill family home, I saw three generations of sheep farmers and the children were so disturbed that young lambs were being brought in from the hill that were dead. I think there is always a very strong emotional feeling for sheep farmers between them and their animals. And in short, Barclay Bell, there's no insurance cover that these people can rely on. A loss is a loss. A loss is a loss. Um, you know, most of these flocks of sheep are out in the field and really, um, I don't honestly think there is any insurance policy which would, would cover th these situations and if there were, it would be prohibitively expensive. Barclay Bell, Joe Byrne, thank you both very much. Well, since the snow fell so dramatically on Friday, it's not just farmers who have suffered in our rural communities. With many pensioners cut off from their carers, we send our reporter Judith Hill out with one home help team struggling against the elements in Carnlough. Another day, another hazardous journey into the snowbound glens for home help team Mary and Ina. So an, an interesting few days up here. Yes, very interesting. Um, scary at times. We went with them to see the challenges they've been up against simply to do their job. You get a lift so far and then you just walk on up to the lane. Since the snowstorm broke, these two have been working around the clock to reach stranded pensioners in Carnlock. Hey Maggie, are you all right? Huh? You grand? 92-year-old Maggie was cut off from home help support until yesterday. It's a weight lifted off you, you know, um, it really is, because they can come in, they're professionals at it. What they could do in, say, ten minutes, it would take me an hour, you know, even washing mommy. They, you know, they have their system and, and everything, it just takes me half the morning. But they're really good and it's lovely to see them back. With some of their colleagues unable to get to work, the pair have had to double the number of visits they carry out each day. It's been very stressful. Uh, me and my other team member has been doing as much as we can. And uh, as I say, we're out as, as many times as we can. And she's stressed, I'm stressed, but we're getting there. We try our best to get to everybody, and especially somebody that are on their own. We would drive so far and then walk and we'd walk and then get them sorted and then walk back to our own car, sometimes as far as we can and do as much as we can. And their day's work isn't yet done. There are more clients to see, but their spirit and willpower is not enough in every instance, it seems. And this should have been Mary and Ina's last stop. Faye's town deep in the glens, where some homes tonight remain cut off, including their last remaining client, who is still unreachable. And that's not a unique scenario. In Dramara, 88-year-old David McNulty's home help carers haven't been able to get through to him. He depends on them. It's been very tough now, it really has been, yep. Why, why is it so tough this time round? Well, we're just totally blocked off and your doors were blocked off. We couldn't get into Davy and we couldn't get out. And my mum was ringing that she couldn't get out either, and it was very difficult. And so any signs of green here are welcome hints of a thaw that can't come soon enough for those who depend on the help of others just to get by. Judith Hill, UTV Live tonight, The Glans.
And don't forget to check out our comprehensive coverage of the Big Freeze. It's on our website. We have footage of the RAF helicopter, which is being used to make emergency food drops in areas which are cut off. And as well as that, you can uh, get dramatic pictures from some of the worst affected areas right across Northern Ireland. And you can send in your pictures to our website at u.tv slash galleries. Hello and welcome to BBC Newsline. It was another day of bringing relief to those stranded by the heavy snowfall. An RAF Chinook helicopter dropped feed for animals this afternoon, while emergency teams ferried food and medical supplies to householders cut off from main roads. David Maxwell reports. In the shadow of Slemish, snow continues to fall. We could only get so far up the Drum Crow Road, and then this. Just to give you an idea of the height of the snow, this is the top of the head. The road is eight foot below me, and there are elderly people up this road who haven't been able to get out for five days. But help is on the way. I start just early in the morning and work most of them, well, late, to, late at night, and we'll see how we just go for tiredness. We'll go home when we're tired. This work is slow but vital. Last night, the digger opened the road to this dairy farm. It's allowed a delivery of feed, and not a moment too soon. As far as coming up here was concerned, I saw a farmer's little mill needing it on Friday has, has been run out and no way of getting near. And of course, no access means no collections of produce. Yesterday at this farm, 7,000 litres of milk had to be drained away. And for other farmers here, the grim task of identifying livestock losses goes on. Trying to evacuate sheep and them dead, you know, it's horrible. It has, so I don't know what to, what will do. This is a close-knit community and every effort's being made to help the housebound. Pensioners like Tom Cameron are completely reliant on the generosity of others. Only thanks to good neighbours uh, around. They brought me, they brought me grocery and stuff, and and I got dinners and stuff, and everybody has been brilliant. With no thaw in sight, that community spirit will need to hold up. This icy existence is difficult, but life in the freezer goes on. David Maxwell, BBC Newsline, Carnalbana. Well, other families in remote areas are still stranded in their own homes too, cut off by large snowdrifts. One woman, Patricia Ward from Dundraud in County Antrim, emailed BBC Newsline looking for help. We sent Mark Simpson to try to find her. It's a long 20-minute walk through deep snow to Patricia Ward's front door. It's hard to get in, and for her, it's impossible to get out. We got your email. We're here to help. She said she was just happy to see another human being. On Friday morning, I got up with the snow, no electric. As Saturday wore on, the snow drift at the gate got higher and higher, and that has been us since Thursday. With the eight foot snow drift here, the dog kennel, we had to take the dog out of the kennel, and it is full of snow. What was your worst fear? The husband taking ill, because there was no way we were getting an ambulance here. He suffers heart problems, so that's it. It got to the stage now, he needs tablets, I need feed for the animals, I'm running out of milk, and that's why I have appealed for help. What she really needs is the road to her house cleared. The snow is so deep it's almost above hedge height. That's Patricia's house up there. Even if a digger was to arrive to dig out the snow, it's going to take a very long time. As we were filming, a driver suddenly arrived and offered to help. It's horrendous, really is horrendous. Do you think you can dig Patricia and her husband out? Yes, but it mightn't just all happen today. Well, well, I'll not leave here tonight till I can get as much done for as I can. It's a slow process, but it seems this family's five-day ordeal is nearly over. Mark Simpson, BBC Newsline, Dundraud. Other areas across Northern Ireland are still feeling the effects of the deep snowdrifts. Eunan McConville's report starts in County Londonderry. Bonnaher in the foothills of the Spurns. You see it there, look, Graham, where the sheep was eating the bark uh -huh. of the tree, they're hungry. Uh -huh. Farmers Graham Moore and Ian Canning are on their way to help their neighbour. 
Brendan Kelly. Brendan hasn't been able to leave his home for several days, but he's more worried about his livestock. It's very tough. I have meal in the house up there, but uh, it'll run out too shortly, and uh, I've got out with a few bags to sell for it. Help, help them, you know, definitely warm them up a bit, you know. But I can't get out to see whether they're living or dead or what way they're, you know. You've seen how deep the snow is. There's no way up, was, unless it's dropped on my helicopter. You've no other way in here. It's completely cut off. And the helicopter was indeed being used to drop bales of hay to farms in the glens of Antrim. To the south, Leitrim in County Down. Conditions no better. Below the mounds of snow lies Fenton McElroy's house. On Friday, the electric went out, so we had to move out. The wife and three children over to my parents. Uh, and so we're just trying to get back in here now today, Tuesday. And the electric is only come back on yesterday, at dinner time yesterday. So that's how bad it's been. A few miles over the hills lies Dramara, another farming area counting the cost of dead lambs and sheep. It's really terrible, it's horrendous. We're getting lambs every day, we go out, every minute we go out, we're getting lambs and yo's dead in the field. Aid did arrive here today, but the feeling is that it came a little too late for some. Eunan McConville, BBC News. Antrim. These pictures taken a short time ago from the UTV helicopter over North Antrim show farms, roads and fields in some cases blanketed under several feet of snow. Vehicles have had to be abandoned and roads are impassable. It's making life almost intolerable for farmers. This is the height of lambing season and for some people like Martina McGarl in Glen Arif, it's getting tougher with every hour that passes. For nearly three days, she's not been able to get to her animals. She believes time is running out. Look at the conditions that we are coping with. There are, um, I estimate the farmers in this area stand to lose up to 70% of their stock, if not 90% of their stock. Um, we can't reach them, we can't get on the roads, we can't even get into our own farms. In places, the snow is drifting up to 18 feet and farmers are left helpless. Sheep are buried and in some cases, lambs are dying as they are born. Farmers want to see urgent government action to organise food drops so they can save what's left of their herds. There's going to be tens of thousands of animals lost in this and there's no point in waiting till the snow blows over. You need to take action now. There needs to be some, there's people need supplies there left at in. They need to get the electricity on as soon as possible. They need to get telephones working again and it needs to be done now. Hundreds of homes across the country in areas like Ballycastle and Hannestown are still without electricity and NIE say it's deploying an extra helicopter to help lift crews into isolated areas that are worst affected. These pictures filmed by NIE engineers show the difficulties they have been facing. The strong winds and sheer weights of the snow meant telegraph poles simply couldn't cope. These are obviously exceptional circumstances. There's been atrocious weather since Friday. Uh, we're doing everything within our power to try and get customers back on supply. And we understand that customers will feel frustrated and uh, become impatient at times. We would ask them to bear with us. We're doing everything within our power and we're using all the resources that we have available to us to get people back on supply as quickly as possible. The severe weather has also led to the closure of many schools, giving children an extra day off. Technically, it may be spring, but the winter weather is maintaining its icy grip across many parts. Here in Bush Mills last night, a snowplow was doing its best to keep the Cushendall Road to Ballycastle open. The worst of the snowfall may be over for now, but it will take days, if not months, for many, especially farmers, to recover from what has been left in its wake. Sarah Moore, UTV Live. Don't forget to check out our website for more pictures. You can take a three minute flight across Snowbound Northern Ireland as captured by the UTV helicopter on the website and check out the photos you've been sending us including a winter wonderland in Ballycastle, Tyler and his massive snowman, Mr McCormick's unique cat glue and fun in the snow with many children making the most of the wintry weather. You can check it all out and send in your own photographs t.tv slash guy. Well, farmers have suffered some of the worst of the extreme weather. Many have been braving the snow to dig livestock out of deep drifts. But with the bitter conditions set to persist, thousands more animals may be lost. From Northern Ireland, Mark Mallet on those who are fearing for their future. The snow stretches right along the eastern counties of Northern Ireland, 
These pictures taken earlier today show farms, roads and fields blanketed under several feet of snow. In rural County Down, and for miles, the snow is stacked high, and underneath, hundreds of sheep are trapped. It's quite hard to believe that the local road that runs through this farming community is some 15 to 20 feet beneath this layer of snow. And you get a real sense of the anguish being faced by local farmers. This mountain range would normally have several hundred sheep roaming through it. Of those that are visible, they're fighting for survival. And then there are the animals that have already lost the battle against the wintry conditions. It was hoped lambing season would be the saving grace for farmers following a wet summer last year. But this is a catastrophic start to spring. It was dreadful, so it is. You just can't get over it. So we were digging lambs out. Everything was standing on Friday for seven hours. And it's not just farmers in Northern Ireland. You got one lucky sheep, man. Here in Wales, one farmer pulls one of his flock alive from underneath a six-foot wall of snow. But the majority aren't so lucky. For his family, this is the worst natural disaster in living memory. And I was in shorts this time last year, and the sheep were going in the trees to get cover from the sun. That's how crazy this, this, this weather's gone. Um, my father can't remember, and he's 77. He can't remember a spring like this. The snowstorm may be over, but the rescue work will take days, and farmers will be counting the cost for years to come. Mark Mallett, ITV News, County Down. And the vulnerable. In Northern Ireland, the helicopters have been out again delivering emergency food supplies to remote farms and communities cut off by deep snow. From County Down, Mark Mallett reports. It's the moment the Heron family have been waiting for an RAF Chinook delivering essential supplies to their farm. Desi Heron is one of many farmers in Northern Ireland, likely to have lost dozens of sheep in this springtime snowstorm. And for the animals that have been rescued, this food could ensure their survival. Oh, it's more than what we can't we can't fish it. We were organised this, so we can't fish it enough. But more than happy what they've done for us, like. And in the most remote parts of County Down, the community is also being called upon to help those in need. In an area where your nearest neighbour is maybe one or two kilometres away, this community has no option but to work together. Not just for the farmers whose livelihoods have been so badly affected, but also for the elderly and vulnerable. David McNulty is 88 years old and his home help carers simply can't get to him. I think that's the worst one. It's been very tough now, it really has been. Yep. Why, why is it so tough this time round? Well, we're just totally blocked off. And your doors were blocked off. We couldn't get in the dairy and we couldn't get out. And my mum was ringing that she couldn't get out either. And it was very difficult. Elsewhere, and the Red Cross have been dropping off food and supplies for the local community. Terrible. Really terrible altogether. Really cut off, you know. It's very hard now. So it is. It's very bad snow, like. So late on in the year. The science behind this unseasonable start to spring lies well above the mountains of County Down. The jet stream that has been pushed further south means that the UK could continue to face strong winds and snow flurries, certainly over the Easter period and possibly for much of the month of April. Mark Mallett, ITV News, County Down. In parts of the United Kingdom affected by heavy snow have been struggling to save their livestock. In Northern Ireland, an RAF helicopter was brought in to drop feed to animals stranded in the snow. The farmers say the impact of the weather could lead to disastrous losses. Our correspondent Danny Savage reports from the Isle of Man, where hundreds of sheep are now thought to have died. Climbing up over vast drifts in search of their lost sheep, these hill farmers hope this is a rescue mission, but fear it will turn into a body count. Up to 700 of their ewes are missing, buried alive. And how hopeful are you of finding them alive? Um, not very now, it's probably too long. Um, they'll be packed, probably suffocated now before we get to them. The snow's too deep to, to dig, so we'll just have to hope and see if we can find any in the shallower drift. This is our livelihood. We've got nothing else. Like, once the sheep are gone, that's it. 
we just got to keep going. They're not insured against any loss of livestock, so it's a case of hoping to find survivors yeah. by prodding in the snow. They have a huge area to search. Days after the snow fell, roads here are still difficult to negotiate. It's like this for mile after mile. Across the Irish Sea, communities have been cut off on the hills of Northern Ireland for days. So this RAF Chinook has been brought in. It's cargo, animal feed, to be dropped where farmers can't get to. Power supplies in the worst affected areas of Britain are still looking badly damaged in places. But this extended winter period could mean higher energy bills for many people as the temperatures stay low. Yay! On the west coast of the Isle of Man, we found some hope in one freezing field. And so another successful find in the deep snowdrifts here. This one looking quite well after its ordeal. And this is a scene that's been repeated at farms across the Isle of Man. Volunteers giving up their time to come and rescue livestock. Although some of them needed special help to get to the warm barn waiting for them. In this island community, strangers are offering a helping hand to assist those most in need. Danny Savage, BBC News. heavy snowfall that's plunged many communities into crisis. For some, there's still little sign of a thaw. An RAF Chinook helicopter continues to bring much needed food to stranded people and animals. Today, it's been making drops in County Down. First tonight, our district reporter David Maxwell spent much of today visiting a couple and their newborn baby at Fesh Town in the hills above Glen Arm in County Antrim. New life is vulnerable in these conditions, and it's not just animals that are at risk. Well, I've been told there's a couple in the house at the end of this lane with a young baby. They've been completely blocked in here until last night, and as you can see, it's still not going to be that easy to reach them. Karen Ray gave birth just six weeks ago. With no way out, she's had it more difficult than most new mothers. But two days ago, supplies came from the skies. Oh. Um, this is some of the food then that they dropped off to us, so it is. Right, so this is the what came in the helicopter drop? Yes, um, the water and the nappies and baby wipes and the baby milk as well. And how um, desperate were you for this stuff when it arrived? <laughs> really desperate. We had no water or electric, um, so we definitely needed it, so they sent out the helicopter. The airdrop's been a lifeline for baby Charlie, but it'll be some time before life here returns to normality. A few miles away, it's baby lambs that are in jeopardy, and this is the emergency vehicle on its way to help them. The Forest Service have three of these. They're useful on rough mountainous terrain. On heavy snow, they're lifesavers. Well, this is soft track. It's a specially adapted vehicle that can perform in all kinds of terrain. And it's taking food to sheep, which are half a mile in that direction. They haven't had food for six days. When it reaches the sheep, it seems to be met with approval. Life in these frozen rural communities continues to be difficult. There's due to be a funeral here in a few days, but only when they get the snow moved. And help isn't reaching everyone. The spring blizzard has caused much misery, but for some, day six of the snow brought better news. Baby Charlie's had a cold start in this white world, but spring may be just round the corner. David Maxwell, BBC Newsline, Fesh Time. Well, the situation in parts of County Down isn't much better. Our reporter Julie McCulloch spent much of the day in the Dramara Hills where farmers are still battling the horrendous conditions to get food to their animals. At last, the much-needed supplies for farmers in the Dramara Hills were on their way. But these sheep couldn't stay out of the cold for any longer. They needed to get into a warm barn for a few hours at least. This little lamb is hypothermic, it can't, hasn't got the energy to stand. Um, we had one the same this morning out of the field beside us. It couldn't even lift its head. We bring them in, warm them, um, feed them bottles of milk and try to get them back on their feet again and warm them back out. And this is where they'll be heading back to. Fields covered in a thick layer of snow. Something that is finally becoming less of an issue for people travelling on the roads. Well, we've just 
driven outside Dramara a short distance and we thought most of the roads were opened at this stage but as you can see this one's closed but I think we have a bit of help. For many roads though the best form of transport is still one of these. The Morn Mountain Rescue Team had to be called out to take this elderly gentleman into respite care for a few days. A far cry from what they normally do. No, no, this is not the traditional stuff that you say we're more used to being up in, in the mountains. But as you say, we have, a, we have the uh, facilities there to go out and assist people when need be. But I say most of our work would be up in the mountains. But with the Land Rovers that are used in the mountains can be used in other areas to assist the community. And their work and the work of others in this area may not be done just yet. Because if this picture is anything to go by, the thaw is some way off. Julie McCulloch, BBC Newsline, the Dramara Hills. Well, last night we brought you the story of the Ward family in County Antrim. They've been snowed in since last Thursday night. Patricia Ward contacted the BBC looking for help and today, after a 36-hour dig, her lane was finally cleared. Today, Mark Simpson caught up with Patricia once again at her Dundraud home. From this to this, and here's how. The spring blizzard left the Ward family stranded in their Dundraud home for five days. Patricia Ward asked for help in a BBC interview and a local digger company answered the call. It took two days to clear the snow, but for Patricia, it was worth waiting for. Wonderful, wonderful, so it is. I can't believe it. I like getting out of prison. <laughs> Only now can you see the real depth of the snow and just why it took so long to clear the road. Every job's different, but this one has been a, a mammoth sort of a task because the lane is about 450 metres long. It's very long, plus you have the bends on it, it's not a straight road. So it hasn't been handy and with trees and low wires and things on it. But uh, we got there in the end and uh, I know Patricia's very happy to be able to get back out to the road again. How much are you going to charge her? Probably about five or six thousand pounds. You know. <laughs> no, it, it, the, look, to my knowledge, there'll be no charge. There'll be no charge. <laughs> but after working day and night, Richard didn't leave completely empty handed. You saved our lives. That's no problem. Thanks, Dad. Thank you. Okay, sure. thank you. But in the nicest possible way, Patricia was glad to see the back of him. Mark Simpson, BBC News. Cannot quantify the financial loss to its members. However, it seems increasingly likely that thousands of livestock have perished. So will farmers receive any compensation? The Agriculture Minister says she is going to raise it at the Stormont Executive meeting tomorrow. But will any money come through? Natasha Sayi has been finding out. The spring blizzard couldn't have come at a worse time for sheep farmers. This ewe, barely alive, is in lamb, along with hundreds of her flock who are presumed dead. The loss familiar to hill farmers from the glens to Dramara. Northern Ireland economy is not doing good. Northern Ireland economy needs us farmers too, and we need, we're going to need help. It's not all the farmers in Northern Ireland, just everybody that's been affected by this. Will they be compensated? The Agriculture Minister hopes so. In the, in the longer term, when you look into the future, the financial aspect of this, the financial impact this is going to have on the farming community is something that the executive is seriously going to have to consider. When you look back to the big freeze of 2010, there were similar calls for compensation for farmers, particularly in the Sparrens yet no extra money came forward. There was no budget available within the Department of Agriculture. The executive was not able to find money. There was no money coming from Westminster. The one thing that was done though, uh, the sheep which died, uh, the farmers did still receive their annual subsidy on, on those animals and that was uh, really what was done for the farmers. There are a few isolated cases where the executive has managed to compensate farmers when crops failed due to heavy rain. But then the actual number of farms affected was nothing on the scale seen with the spring blizzard. The issue will be discussed when the executive meets tomorrow and there's lots to consider. If they decide to go ahead with compensation, will it be a one-off or does this set a precedent for payments in future severe weather events? Where will the money come from? Because there's no specific budget for loss of livestock at the Department of Agriculture. And if farmers are allowed to claim for compensation for loss of earnings, will other workers be able to do the same? There's certainly a will among politicians to provide compensation. What they've got to do 
is find a way. Natasha Saeed. Paul Clark, welcome to the program. A multi-million pound rescue package is announced for farmers affected by the snow crisis. Tonight, we have reaction from farmers who say it doesn't go far enough. Tomorrow, it will be exactly a week since the snow crisis began to unfold. And farmers who've borne the brunt of the blizzards have been pleading for more help from government. That came today, and it's financial aid. Stormont will pay for the disposal of thousands of animals who've been killed. Then an extra five million pounds will be rolled out to stricken farmers. But as our correspondent Sharon O'Neill found out, already those affected say it's not enough. Viewers may find some of the scenes distressing. Day seven of this crisis, and emergency aid is now getting through. But desperate farmers say it's simply not enough. Now government has come back with more, a hardship package that will see it fit the bill for the removal and disposal of thousands of dead livestock and an extra £5 million to help those left devastated. It's yet another day of snow disruption for many. Heavy drifts remain in many areas and farmers on high ground are still struggling to feed their livestock. An RAF Chinook is expected to drop feed in County Down today. It made a similar trip over affected areas in County Antrim yesterday. Now, reporter Julie McCullough is in the Dramara Hills and she joins us now. Julie, uh, what have you discovered today? Well, Jim, you would be forgiven for thinking I was in the Alps today, but as you say, I am in the Dramara Hills close to Leitrim. And I hope this can give you some idea of just how much snow has fallen over here since Friday and just what people have had to deal with. Now, the road service are telling me that most of the roads are open here now. And in fact, if you take a look, we've managed to get our satellite truck up here this afternoon for you. But there are still four roads in the area that I am told which are unpassable. And in fact, road service are due to come out onto this very road itself later today to make it a little wider so a couple of cars can get can drive along at the same time. But those roads, those, the snow on those roads is also causing a lot of problems for people who live on them. Earlier I was out with the Mourn Mountain Rescue Team and they had to go to get an elderly gentleman out of his home near Dramara so he could be taken into respite care for a few days. Julie, Welcome many thanks to indeed. BBC Newsline. Farming leaders have welcomed a proposed five million aid package to help those who've lost livestock in the heavy snowfalls and freezing temperatures. The package was agreed at a meeting of the Stormont Executive. Meanwhile, military helicopters which were being used to drop animal feed have been stood down after improved conditions on the roads, a decision that's been criticised by the DUP. Here's Mervyn Jess. Contrasting sheep scenes to those we have witnessed over the past week, healthy and well-fed ewes with their newborn lambs. But the plight of hill farmers worst hit by the recent blizzards continues to concentrate minds, with the Stormont executive pledging to foot the bill for collecting and disposing of dead animals, and the Department of Agriculture minister promising a hardship fund for farmers. The cost has not yet been fully worked out, but a budget of £5 million has been set aside for these emergency measures, which have been welcomed by the Ulster Farmers Union. You have to realise these farmers have no income this year at all. In a lot of cases, um, what stock they have left will probably won't even meet their costs. And, and the, 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 the hardship fund hopefully will help those people to restock, but it won't help you know, to, to keep their income going for this year. A lot of these are family businesses and they will do their utmost to hold on to that business and I hope that they will come through this. Meanwhile, the RAF and Irish Air Corps helicopter support for stranded farmers and their stock has been stood down. The Department of Agriculture says it's redirecting its resources from air support to ground support. But the move's been criticised as premature by the chairman of the Stormont Agriculture Committee. This has always been about speed, and the minister has been slow to react. She has reacted, she asked the RAF for help, and now she has withdrawn that support and it is badly needed still in my constituency of North Antrim. These sheep are lucky compared to some animals on higher ground. We saw the pictures of them being hauled out of snow holes. But still, the situation remains. Farmers are facing a very, very difficult time in the weeks and months ahead. Mervyn Jess, BBC Newsline, Drapers Town.
While BT engineers will work through the weekend to repair phone lines damaged by the snow, services have already been restored to more than 15,500 customers, mainly in counties Antrim and Down, but many other phones are still out of service. BT has appealed to customers to report any faults urgently. The snow still forms a blanket across many fields on high ground. Since the spring blizzard, the job of looking after livestock has got a little easier for farmers in the worst affected areas. But they now have the added emotional job of disposing of the animals that died in the freezing conditions. In the first of our two reports tonight, Conor McCauley returns to the Dramara area of County Down. It may be a picturesque view, but 10 days on, it's still difficult for those caught up in Dramara's snowscape to see it. People, especially the farmers, are fed up as they struggle to provide for livestock in what are difficult conditions. <coughs> Most animals are now down off the mountain and either housed or close to farm, but fodder is running low and the prices of what can be got are rising in line with demand. All in all, things aren't much better than they were at the start of all of this. Well, the work anything we're going to do is just three times a work. There's snow, everywhere's blocked up with snow. We had a shift snow every day, you get shift into the gates, gaps, fine stuff. And any sheep that's missing on the mountains, are, they're dead. We drove deep into the hills around Dramara and Leitrim to try and assess how things are going. Roads access has improved as of the middle of last week. But for men like Patrick Morgan, a sheep farmer like his father before him, this lambing season has been a trying one. Though finding a male sheep or Good tip on, alive in a drift after nine days when he really should have been dead has provided some hope. I just went up along the field and I was checking along the ditch and I seen the I started calling the sheep and I heard the tip bleeding. So I got the shovel out and dug it out. And How far down did you have to go? I went three foot, four foot down, and then I had to get down into the hole where it was and lift it out. What kind of that, now that was nine days on. What kind of shape was it in that? Well, it was not in bad shape, you know. It could have been, could have been worse. And the work to keep the access to farms open is still going on. Heavy machinery paid for by the executive, working away on the side roads that lead to many of the more isolated homes. Well, this is the kind of work that's still going on in the Dramara Hills 10 days after the snows first arrived. Now, the road isn't actually blocked. What they're doing there is they're taking the high banks of snow and tipping them into the fields in case those high banks collapse on passing motorists as the thaw kicks in. And the thaw is the one thing everyone here is hoping for. When it comes, it'll be a huge relief to farm workers and farm animals alike. Conor McCauley, BBC Newsline. Dramara. Phase Town in the glens of Antrim was also among the worst hit by the drifting snow. Ten days after the blizzard, BBC Newsline's reporter Mervyn Jess has gone back to spend the day with a farmer in the area above Glenarm who was left battered by the weather. The struggle in the snow goes on for hill farmers like this. For most people on the low-lying grounds, the recent snow has come and gone. But up here in the glens of Antrim, in one of the worst hit areas, it hasn't. This is the first few sheep we've got out since that day of the storm. Uh, we managed to get as many in that we could get to, but there was a pile of sheep that we didn't get to, and there was a lot of casualties in them because they were buried in the snow. So what are the problems feeding the sheep at the moment, Brian? Well, the biggest problem is, you can see, the fields are totally covered in snow, and there's no green. There's a couple of wee patches today for the first so we're just having to give the sheep as much meal as we can to keep them living, but there's been absolutely no grass, and the situation is even more critical than when they were dropping stuff from helicopters, because the sheep was only a few days in. Now the sheep are getting hungry and hungry, and they still have no forage. You know what I mean? But farmers are having to get to them themselves and just try to keep them alive to see if the snow thaws. Like that's all we can do. These two lambs were lucky; they survived. Their mother didn't. Now the job in hand is to get them feeding on another ewe. Sheep naturally make for cover in bad weather, but this hill farmer says they were thwarted by Brussels. But they were all huddled up where they knew the wind was, but I was told I must cut these wands or be penalised and lock my single farm payment away. And we, he, we have all the ones cut and all the rushes, which would have been great shelter for the sheep, would have kept more of them alive. And the sheep knew to make till the wands, but when they got there, they found they were all away because 
the, the laws from Brussels tell me I must cut them. So what about the rest of your livestock down on the farm here then? We had no power here for three days when the storm started. So the cows weren't milked for three days and that's very stressful for milk cows and then problems are rising now. You know, as late as this, cows that weren't milked now, it's given, you know, the, their elders got too big, the milk wasn't getting away and now they're giving baller. Will it make you think about what it is you do farm in future and what livestock you do keep, you think? Yeah, I think it will. I think it will. I think I'll have to, you know, if I thought this was going to be like this at lambing time, I would have to think I'll uh, keep a lot less sheep or have sheds for them all. You know what I mean? But sheds cost a lot of money. Would, would it be viable to put up two or three sheds to keep to put 200 yews in? You, you know what I mean? But if we're going to get these freak weather conditions, you know what I mean? We'll have to make changes in the way we farm. Right now, most hill farmers would probably settle for a change in the weather. Mervyn Jess, BBC Newsline, in the Glens of Antrim. We'll get a forecast later in the programme. Also, we'll hear about the risk of potentially deadly avalanches in the Mourne Mountains. Two weeks on from the heavy snowfall that brought misery to thousands of people, the full extent of the loss to farmers is emerging. So far, more than 3,000 dead animals have been collected. And I have to warn you, there are pictures of carcasses in our next report that you may find upsetting. Our reporter, David Maxwell, has been talking to farmers about the £5 million hardship package announced by Stormont last week. Confusion over its distribution has led to anger. The slow thaw continues and it's revealing some disturbing scenes. As farmers pick up the pieces, help for those affected by the cold weather is becoming a hot topic. We didn't know no dark number to ring because with no television, no wireless, no nothing, everything was cut off, which we were getting through things. But to tell me now, because of my VT code, that I'm not getting compensation. I'm not saying I'm worse off than anybody else. There's people as badly off as me and maybe worse. But why isolate me and I'm the highest on this side of the hill? Just because I'm a postcode. The problem for this farmer and many others is that they are not automatically eligible for assistance. The Department of Agriculture has identified 10 postcode areas within which farms will be entitled to help. But snowfall pays no attention to postcodes. I'm just a few miles outside Plum Bridge and it's hard to believe it now but this area was also badly affected by the spring blizzard and yet BT79 was not on the list for help. Well I felt we were forgot about, you know, I felt like, I know up in County Antrim, County Down was badly hit but we were badly hit too, you know, and like when the compensation came out everybody's entitled to it. But today, the Agriculture Minister went to the Sperrins. Her message that those outside the eligible postcode list can also apply for help. And this farm is one of those that will get it. I'm absolutely here to give that reassurance to the local farmers that they are included in the scheme, despite the conversations of the last number of days. I thought it was important to come out to meet farmers on the ground and to give them that reassurance in person. Why was it specified to particular postcodes? Well, I suppose um, we had blanket snow right across down and um, Antrim, so it was in terms of trying to get things processed quickly, those postcodes were put out there. But I am was always aware that the Sparrens was also affected, so there will be no different treatment for the farmers of the Sparrens area as there, w as there will be to the, the farmers in down in Antrim. For the moment, that help comes in the form of collecting carcasses. 3,000 have been dealt with so far. But for farmers, details of the executive's £5 million hardship scheme are still unclear. All we know is that the payouts will be linked to the number of dead animals collected. The minister may have wanted to reassure farmers today, but she still hasn't spelt out what compensation will look like. And that's the detail many now want to hear. David Maxwell, BBC Newsline, in the Sperrins. It's been nearly three weeks since the spring blizzard and we're now getting a clearer picture of the damage it caused to livestock and livelihoods. The Department of Agriculture says so far it's collected the carcasses of more than 9,500 sheep, mostly lambs, and nearly 300 cattle from farms. BBC Newsline has returned to visit people we met in the glens of Antrim. Our district reporter David Maxwell discovered that while the thaw is slow, farming life is getting easier. Spring has arrived and animals which once struggled to survive are now enjoying the sunshine. Just a few weeks ago it was a different story for farmers here. It has been a horrendous nightmare, it's just like a nightmare for me, it's, it's horrendous boys. I don't think you would you'd have to be here, it's just knocked the whole life and soul out of me. But three weeks has brought big changes. 
there's still snow on the higher ground here, but much of this landscape has been transformed. And while there are still difficulties for farmers here, life is getting better. Life has been fairly tough, but we are getting there. We're getting there slowly. We've got a specialised firm in who, who took the, or the, or the roofs down and carted away the scrap metal for it was a danger, particularly of wind, and, and we removed the dead sheep from in, in the shed and got that away. A roofing company fixed one of the barns free of charge, giving these sheep and their lambs much needed shelter. We also visited the Crawford farm in the aftermath of the spring blizzard. Two thirds of their sheep have now given birth, but they're not out of the woods yet. My mum and my dad, they have to lamb the sheep nearly 15 miles away from home. They're up at half five every morning. They're traveling down there. They're back up for a bite to eat. And they're back down there the rest of the day. Don't see them very much. It's, it's pretty hectic. The survivors have been fitted with these transparent plastic coats designed to keep out the cold. Everyone here is hoping they won't be needed again anytime soon. Well, every time you hear the snow, oh, we, like we drop snow, like we drop snow. I don't want to see snow the rest of my life. Many farmers here have welcomed the department's response to this crisis so far, and they eagerly await news of hardship payments for the spring they won't quickly forget. David Maxwell, BBC Newsline. It's being called the miracle of the lost sheep. Two rams trapped in snow in the North Antrim Hills since the spring blizzard three weeks ago have been found alive. In the hills above Brisheen, they survived in an air pocket in a ditch covered in six feet of snow. Our reporter, Mark Simpson, went to see them. They were lost and now they've been found. The sheep missing for more than three weeks in the snow. A man walking his dog spotted them and told the farmer Sam Wallace the good news about the lost sheep. He couldn't believe it, and neither could his son Graham. He had taken pictures of the field where the rams were last seen 23 days previously. You'd have to see it to believe it. Um, my father and, and me went up, and, and um, it was great to see them. Great to see them alive. Um, gives you a bit of hope when something lives, when you've been through two or three weeks of what farmers have been through in the area as well. For most of the time, the sheep had been completely covered in snow. Only in recent days did it start to thaw. So how do you think the sheep survived? Well, uh, probably the dike here uh, created air pockets and uh, that helped them to survive. But at the end of the day, it was a miracle. Yeah, there's you had scriptures about miracles, but they're still miracles, not definitely one of them. The survival skills of the sheep have earned them the nickname the Rambo Rams, and they certainly now have a spring in their step. It's almost a month since the big snowfall. It's highly unlikely that any more lost sheep will be found, but given what happened here, you never know. Mark Simpson, From BBC. Across the province on the effects of the recent spring blizzard, a BBC Newsline special with Mark Simpson. The record books tell one story about the month just past. It was the coldest March in half a century since the big snow of 1963. But one cold statistic doesn't tell the whole story of the thousands of people affected by the spring blizzard, some of the worst weather conditions many of us can remember. On this BBC Newsline special, we'll show where, how and why it was so bad. And we'll be hearing from farmers who battled against the odds and the elements to try to save their livestock. Just devastating really, you know, we're still trying to take it in, just caught up in the middle of it and sort of watching it all happen around us. We'll see pictures, some broadcast for the first time, of engineers struggling through the extreme weather conditions to try to restore power. Oh, it's up to 10 foot, that's the snow, access. Nothing works. It's hard to even walk on it. And we'll show the lengths that neighbours went to just to help each other. Lawn's Brenton Kelly's house up under, look, and you can see that Brenton's like a good mile up on the mountain. 
The snow was predicted well in advance, the warnings were clear, but in the end there wasn't enough time for farmers to round up all of their livestock. Some were lucky, others weren't, and were left counting the financial and the emotional cost. The few surviving sheep out of a flock of hundreds. The pregnant ewes huddled together to keep warm, but it wasn't enough. Under the thick white snow, the grim reality of this spring blizzard. There's about four feet of snow covering this field, and I suppose what's really harrowing is that I have absolutely no idea what's underneath my feet. There could be hundreds of sheep buried here, but the truth is we're not going to know until this field thaws. The relentless snow and wind has cost farmer Campbell Tweed thousands of pounds and there was nothing he could do to stop it. Whenever it was snowing hard, uh, it was just overwhelming. We, we couldn't uh, do anything in it and couldn't ask anyone to go out on that sort of stuff. It's not just animals suffering. A team of police officers, RAF crews and mountain rescue past the devastated flock en route to bringing food to families in the area. Back in the field, there was to be no more rescue, no more aid. Most of the sheep dead or dying from the ordeal. This a cruel blow to farmers already struggling. After a long, difficult year, we've seen a bad weather all last summer, and indeed a lot of farms are actually scarce of feed, and we're hoping for an early spring. And to turn around at the end of March and get this sort of weather conditions, it, it leaves a lot of people in a very difficult position. The Agriculture Minister experienced the extreme conditions here for herself. Some of the scenes are harrowing. It is really devastating for the farming community. And after such a really, really bad year in the farming community, this on top of it is just making things a whole lot worse. So, I mean, I suppose the call today is around supports for the future and what we can do. And I've given undertaken and then I'll bring this to the executive to ask, you know, what supports we can provide for the, the farming community. Any compensation will be some time coming. And Campbell Tweed seems resigned to his loss. It's a familiar story for many other farmers in these hills. As for this little one, pulled out of the snow, it's unlikely she'll survive. From the air, it looks like a winter wonderland. Glenariff, the queen of the glens, sparkles. But at ground level, it's a different story. As elsewhere, farmers and animals are struggling to survive. So you'd normally have 700 at home near the farm? Uh, uh, around the farm, yes. Lama. Yeah. And there's 500 of them not away. We didn't get them home. Right. We didn't get them home. So we're just having to do the best we can Aye. and let nature take its course. Like many farmers, the Crawfords are having to take risks to reach their livestock. My biggest plea would be to get the side roads opened. We ourselves, we've 250 yews stranded up in the mountain in the scariest road. We haven't got food this last two days. I would plead with the MLAs, everybody, to get all the local roads, get shovels, get the army in, whatever it takes. There's animals going to die here. Down the road, pregnant ewes were brought in from the cold, but it didn't save them when this shed collapsed under the weight of snow. Just like a nightmare for me. It's, it's horrendous, boys. I don't think you, you, you'd have to be here. It's just knocked the whole life and soul out of me. Sheep is my life. They've been my life. I worked with them. I was born into them, born with sheep. And we, we, turf, we, we threw the sheep outside here and almost every lamb that has been born since is dead. And collapsed farm buildings aren't the only problem here. This farmer has several hundred sheep up on the mountain above me. He can't get to them, he can't get food to them, and if he doesn't get that to them soon, they'll die. And this nearby business has been devastated. 2,000 hens killed and thousands of pounds of damage to buildings and machinery. We've been on the phone, we're looking for help, we need somebody, to, we're going to run out of feed in two days. Um, we, need, we need help to get this all clear, to get, to get feed back in here again, so that we can at least try and keep going. And what now? Get rid of the snow and <laughs> keep going. You know, that's all we can do. Some of those living in this remote area haven't had electricity for four days. For them, life is on hold. Well, electricity at home has been up since Friday now, and uh, it's difficult now, you know. When, when you haven't got it now, you miss it now. There's a house full of girls. We have a handicapped youngster as well, you know, trying to get things organised and getting out and in, getting groceries, you know, is difficult too, you know. 
It's likely to be some time before this snow and ice disappears. High in the Dramara Hills, a fight for survival. The snow came in on Thursday night and has been a battle for farmers to get to their animals since. This morning, this farmer was helping to clear paths for his neighbours. Yesterday, he was digging out some of his dead animals. I've lost animals. I wouldn't like to say what I've lost, to be honest with you. But I haven't got them all dug out yet. So we're working on digging them out now at the minute. We're just going around feeding them what we can feed. These were some of the lucky ones. Sometimes you'd see a, a small hole there where the sheep are breathing and it melts the snow round the head. And now with the constant blowing of the snow, you, you, this is nothing. As some roads reopened, the First Minister and Health Minister came to see the devastation for themselves. The, the farmers in particular are concerned that uh, you know, there are, it's going to be a very considerable cost uh, to them. They're looking to see what support can be given. Uh, we'll talk with the Agriculture Minister and with the executive colleagues to see what, if anything, can be done. Uh, I just feel that when we can provide hardship payments uh, for people when there's flooding in the city, there must be some support that we can give in these circumstances. Farmers say any compensation would be welcome. The worry now is what difficulties lie ahead when the snow begins to thaw. It really has been a terrible time for farmers. With me now is Barclay Bell, the Deputy President of the Ulster Farmers Union. Would you have any idea how many animals were lost? I think at this stage it is still too early to say just how many, but I mean we, we are in thousands. Uh, I was speaking to one of the farmers in County Antrim yesterday and certainly he was indicating, you know, probably losses of 30 to 40 percent in some of the batches of his sheep. So, you know, at the end of the day we are, we're looking at thousands of sheep. Certainly farmers are always welcome, they, they will welcome any form of compensation. Um, at the end of the day, they are still going to face huge problems. Um, it will alleviate the problem of getting the dead stock lifted. Um, it will give them a little bit of a breather as far as feeding their animals. You know, the, the, the compensation they receive will give them that little bit of a breather. We saw pictures of helicopters dropping foodstuffs, etc. Was that too little, too late? No, I suppose uh, it takes a day or two for these uh, things to get into gear, but uh, certainly I think the department did play a very good role there and um, certainly I think speaking to any of the farmers on the ground in, in the hills, uh, certainly they, were, they welcomed uh, that indeed. Looking back, was the spring blizzard the worst weather you've ever experienced? It certainly has been and I suppose up in the glens of Antrim last week when we were up there I was speaking to uh, a man of 83 years old. He was out trying to find sheep of his own trotting about with a stick and certainly he said in his living memory uh, all his farming career uh, he never remembered anything like it. Barclay Bell thank you very much indeed. The problem wasn't just the heavy snowfall but the fact that it was being constantly driven by a bitter easterly wind. It led to snow drifts of up to 20 feet. Very quickly a number of main roads became impassable and minor roads invisible. Motorists had no option but to abandon their vehicles, only to find later that they had become completely covered in snow. Springtime for motorists in Northern Ireland. Taking to the roads today necessitated taking a shovel. Winter hit back with a vengeance overnight, with people waking up to snow drifts whipped up by high winds. It is just really bad up here. Uh, it always has been. You always get it worse. I think it's just because you're up so high. Near blizzard conditions swept across northern and eastern areas. Some made it through the weather, others didn't. We left the house at Green Island at half past seven. Uh, sat on the Mantra Road for an hour and a half and then abandoned the car and have walked ever since. That's about three miles. I was used to way up near the Cole Mountain and I was used to the snow anyhow, so that was just get up, just wrap up and get on with it right enough. There were major problems on the roads. Many of them were only possible with extreme care. 
like here on the A1 to Newry at Hillsborough, where conditions were treacherous. Other people found themselves having to dig in to get out. Just didn't expect to hit this, because when we left home, it was pretty good. So now we have a decision to go back for trying it on. But uh, unbelievable. First day of spring, second day of spring. Incredible. We were warned that this was coming, but when it hits, there's not much we can do about it. No thaw in sight. The difficulties travelling by road, we came across this abandoned 4x4 vehicle. It seems everyone is finding it tough to get around. But for some, there's no choice. I've had to come out over the snow drift, some of them 20 feet high, to get insulin for my wife. She's insulin dependent. And some groceries, which I have here, uh, I got rescued last night, and this is me making my way back this morning again to my family to bring some food, bring the insulin for my wife that needs it. Uh, the conditions here, as you can see, are horrendous. As they make the arduous trek home, they're returning to a community which is completely cut off. For how long is anyone's guess? It's a long 20 minute walk through deep snow to Patricia Ward's front door. It's hard to get in and for her, it's impossible to get out. How are you doing? We got your email, we're here to help. She said she was just happy to see another human being. On Friday morning I got up with the snow, no electric. As Saturday wore on, the snow drift at the gate got higher and higher, and that has been us since Thursday. With the Ifrit snow drift here, the dog kennel, we had to dig a dog out of the kennel, and it is full of snow. What was your worst fear? The husband taken ill, because there was no way we were getting an ambulance here. He suffers heart problems, so that's it. It got to the stage now, he needs tablets, I need feed for the animals, I'm running out of milk, and that's why I have appealed for help. What she really needs is the road to her house cleared. The snow is so deep it's almost above hedge height. That's Patricia's house up there. Even if a digger was to arrive to dig out the snow, it's going to take a very long time. As we were filming, a driver suddenly arrived and offered to help. It's horrendous, really is horrendous. Do you think you can dig Patricia and her husband out? Yes, but it mightn't just all happen today. Well, I'll not leave here tonight till I can get as much done for as I can. It's a slow process, but it seems this family's five-day ordeal is nearly over. While most farmers searched through the snow for their livestock, outside Dungiven, they battled the conditions to reach neighbours. Some people living high in the Sperrins were cut off for days. It's on Lawrence Brenton Kelly's house up under. Look, we're standing here on the Banner Hill Road. And you can see that Brenton's got like a good mile up on the mountain. Look. And that's we're going to make our way up there now with a bit of groceries and go up and see how things are up there. The snowfall left 67-year-old farmer Brendan Kelly isolated on his hilltop home. Drifts cut the Kelly family off for four days and left them unable to get to their livestock. The weather also hampered efforts to reach them. I've just tracked two miles and inches of snow with Ian Canning, but as you can see here, by the height of the snow drift, conditions have got much more hazardous, and this is where we have to stop and leave the quad bike before we can continue on. We've walked two miles. Mm -hmm. It's still inches deep in snow here. Yeah. How much longer, how much further do we have to walk? Well, there's not a lot of snow here, but we have about at least a quarter of a mile to go up to Brendan's house, and we're climbing very steep. It's Careful. not easy, no. And how long do you see out there, look, Graham, the sheep was eating the bark uh -huh. of the tree. They're hunger, uh -huh. pure hunger. Hunger. Finally, we reached the farmhouse, where there was relief and a warm welcome. Good morning, Brendan. How are you, Ian? <laughs> it's good evening, up. Yes, Brendan. How are you, Graham? Good. Too bad. Too. Good, good. Oh, if it weren't for them boys, I didn't know what I'd do. I'd be standing all together. 
The snow's been very heavy and the drifting was the worst part. That strong easterly one was serious altogether. And uh, last known could be another problem. The road has now been cleared and life has returned to normal for the Kelly family. Brandon hopes it's the last he sees all the snow for quite some time. Not for the first time, this small community clinging to the side of Divis Mountain was digging itself out of the latest snowfall. She hasn't been across the door since Thursday. The hasn't got out the door even. One resident trapped inside her home without water or power got the shock of her life when she looked out of the window on Friday morning. When I looked out the window, my God, I was just looking eye level. We're pretty life for you. That's my nephew. Only he come up. Yeah, the home health couldn't get in. Being trapped in your home is one thing. Being trapped in your car is altogether more serious. Rescue teams have been out and about checking abandoned vehicles stuck in snowdrifts, making sure that there's no one inside. But spotting the vehicles isn't always that easy. This is effectively a snow garage. And if you follow me inside, you can just about see the car that's parked in it. In Glengormley, pedestrians had no choice but to take to the roads, and the conditions continued to disrupt travel, with some children not getting to school again today. My okay. eldest goes okay. to uh, Yalidia, and okay. I haven't been able to get her to school, okay. even though car is fine. But as you can see, <laughs> the street's not moving. Emergency vehicles have also been finding it difficult to get to call outs in some areas. Uh, my mother-in-law uh, had a, a, a slight heart attack and uh, my wife was able to get up to Glen Gormley okay but whenever she phoned the ambulance they could only come to the end of the road there and uh, you know to get her out they had to get a 4 by 4 down the park here and uh, get her up to the end of the road uh, before they could get her into the ambulance so it was a bit of a Bit of a struggle. It was a struggle on the high ground all around Belfast today as people ventured out, even if they were a little unsure underfoot. We're coming up here to see a man who's been stuck in his house for the past three days here on Rushy Hill, and you can see why. Retired school teacher Gerard Gorman and his wife Pauline moved from the city to the country a few years ago. The heavy snowfalls have taught them both a few lessons for the future. We're down to our last, we're down to our last pot of water. Yes. <laughs> we're just yeah. about, we're yeah. just about to fill the buckets with snow. Yeah. <laughs> Give the way the credit here. She has her emergency box, which calls her emergency box. All the essentials will be there. Uh -huh. So we're going to have coal, we're going to have logs, we're going to have food, we're uh -huh. going to have gas, we're going to have water. And we're going to have a wind-up radio. Meanwhile, the battle to keep the roads open continues. We have had the big freeze. Now people are starting to think about what's to follow. The big thaw. It was difficult to get into Belfast tonight, and many of those who made the effort ended up regretting it. Shortly after half past seven, all the lights went out. Victoria Square shopping centre was plunged into darkness. Nearby at the Ulster Hall, a performance of Beethoven's Ode to Joy was cancelled at the last minute. Everyone is moving as fast as they can, but it's not easy. Living through the spring blizzard was difficult enough, never mind working through it. As the landscape turned white, some places looked more like a moonscape. And as the snow spread, so did the par cuts. County Antrim and County Down were the worst affected. Attention then focused on Northern Ireland electricity. Suddenly, a severe weather storm turned into a power crisis. Believe it or not, this is the easy bit, fixing the fault. The tricky part was actually getting here. These pictures taken by a Northern Ireland electricity engineer show just how difficult it's been to reach remote households in the hills above Belfast and elsewhere. George and Mary Cunningham have been waiting for help since Friday afternoon. Today they finally got it, and they also got an explanation as to why it took so long. The conditions is very bad, like the snow, it's up to 10 foot, lots of snow, access, 
Nothing works. It's hard to even walk on it. Do you ever remember anything quite as bad as this? No. Dozens of extra crews from the Republic and Great Britain have been brought in to help NIE. What this crew is trying to do is restore electricity to six houses in the area. They have plenty of equipment and one, two, three, four, five different vehicles. There's only one problem. They can't use the quad bike for the simple reason that the snow here is just too deep. Engineers spent more than four hours here, but it worked. They're heroes to tell you the God's honest truth, what they go through, you know, to, to even get here and do that. And thanks to, to the, the men that even opened, came and opened the roads. You, you seem almost emotional. What? Um, look, there's what's left. The brain. The brain. There. <laughs> that's, all. That, that's what's left. For George and Mary, normal life can now resume. For the engineers, it's straight on to the next job. Keeping the lights on here in Belfast and beyond wasn't easy. In fact, in total, more than 150,000 different households were affected by a power cut. With me now is Randall Gilbert from NIE. Just how difficult were conditions for your engineers? This was an extremely challenging event for NIE, particularly in the first two days of the storm on Friday and Saturday. Uh, we were experiencing, uh, obviously, between 12 and 18 feet of snow, combined with uh, wind gusts of 60 miles per hour during those first couple of days. So this, this was quite a protracted event and a very difficult uh, for us in terms of access to faults uh, to, get to, to get machinery and to get people to the faults to get them repaired. So how did you overcome those access problems? Okay, we were able to mobilise additional resources. Uh, we brought in approximately 140 uh, different uh, overhead linesmen from the mainland and from the Republic of Ireland. In addition to that, we were able to mobilise helicopters, uh, four-wheel drive vehicles, and we worked with other agencies and utilities, the likes of the DRD, who were able to assist us with snow blowers and snow ploughs. But I also must again pay tribute to the farmers uh, and the farming community who came out in force with their tractors to keep laneways open as well. It took four days to get everyone's power back on. Have you learned any lessons from this that perhaps next time it could happen more quickly? Our emergency plan worked very well this time round. Uh, we will obviously take a few days to, to uh, consider if there's any improvements. However, we did learn things from previous storms, the likes of working with uh, multi-agencies and, and working with other utilities and other multi-agencies, and we took that on board this time, uh, this time round. So finally, looking back, how will you remember the spring blizzard of 2013? Well, it's, it's looking like this, this sort of event is maybe going to be more, more uh, frequent than we had anticipated or hoped. Uh, we had a, just come from a, a, a snowstorm in January of this year where we had 20,000 customers affected. So we'll look back on this one as one of our major storms. You know, uh, in, my, in my experience, really, the March 10 ice storm was, was almost the pinnacle. I think this is up there along with it. Randall Gilbert, thank you very much indeed. Well, everyone keeps talking about how atrocious the weather conditions have been, but let's try to get them into some sort of historical perspective. And who better to ask than the BBC Newsline weather presenter, Cecilia Daly. It was bad. I mean, anybody who is 50 or under 50 will not have experienced a March as cold as that. And if we just look at the actual daytime temperatures, it was equally as cold as the record, which was set back in 1947. So the coldest March in living memory for a lot of people. I mean, some of the pictures we've seen have been really, really dramatic, particularly those ones of the little lambs and all being pulled out of, out of the snow cover and things like that. I mean, that is a, a memory that a lot of people will have, I suspect. Plus also, how much heating, how much oil have you used in March? I mean, it's been quite tremendous. I unfortunately ran out of oil and it was amazing how quickly the house just became like a brick of ice practically. So it's bitterly cold this afternoon. The winds are very strong and gusty gales along the east coast and there will be more rain, snow and sleet falling. Yeah, I mean, I had to look at the charts twice because the figures that were coming towards us from the east of Europe basically were lower than any figures I'd seen previously that winter. And I actually questioned my colleagues in London saying, um, is this what I'm looking at? Because this is going to be the coldest air we've had since the all of winter, basically. And if there's snow with it and it's set to stay for a while, 
we're in for some really seriously bad weather. We've been lucky in some ways that it's been a very, very slow thaw because if we'd had a rapid thaw, that could have caused all sorts of problems in terms of flooding. The temperatures are creeping up a little bit and by the end of this coming weekend, we'll have a completely different type of weather. The snow presents a huge challenge, not least to journalists, bringing you the pictures and the stories. It means reporters can get cold and wet, and some are happier than others. Andy Martin is with us, and uh, it's blowing and snowing. Yes, it started snowing again. We had a lull of about an hour. Oh, that's handy. We had a <laughs> there's a gritter and a snow plow happening at the same time. I'm now covered in what's left of the slush of the road. Are we making you stay there all day? I really hope you're not, but I suspect you probably will. Andy, thank you very much, Andy Martin. There. Andy, your face rather says it all. It's just miserable, isn't it? There's a moment, isn't there, where the mind just freezes and you don't know what to say next. I think I'm experiencing that just at the moment. Certainly my windows have frozen. Uh, I, I, I thought that uh, it was starting to clear, but yeah, what can I say? It's shocking, it's grim, it's horrible. You're, you're welcome over any time. Andy, a very kind offer. Thank you very much. Andy Martin, who has been out in some appalling uh, snow over the course of the day. Uh, Andy, oh my goodness, you're not even wearing a hat and gloves. It's really grim where you are. It's actually turning to hail now, which is rather uncomfortable. And I can tell you, this is no place for a bald man. Natasha Sae, BBC Newsline, Cairn Castle. David Maxwell, BBC Newsline, in the glens of Antrim. Julie McCulloch, BBC Newsline, the Dramara Hills. Helen Jones, BBC Newsline, County Antrim. Kira Riddell, BBC Newsline, County Down. Mervyn Jess, BBC Newsline. Conor McCauley, BBC Newsline, Dramara. Of course, it wasn't just our reporters who kept us in touch with the spring blizzard. You were out there too, with your phones and your cameras, sending us your pictures. Here's just a brief selection. after the storm and the snow still hasn't